In millions of childhood memories around the world, the silhouette of Disney's Cinderella Castle not only stands tall but practically curtsies with a flourish, welcoming legions of wide-eyed dreamers to a realm where fairy tales leap off the pages. This beloved cultural icon, however, isn't just a figment of pure fantasy. It's a creative homage to a very real German castle with a backstory as compelling as any Disney script, minus the talking mice and magical pumpkins. Indeed, Neuschwanstein Castle has danced through a remarkable saga of rebirth, from silently crumbling on the edge of decay to a breathtaking resurgence that sparkles the imagination and lightens the spirit. In this episode of Old Money Mansions, we'll bring you into the fascinating twists and turns of this real-life Cinderella Castle's revival and unveil an architectural narrative replete with the kind of drama and surprise worthy of a Disney classic ending. Therefore, join us today as we describe how the real-life Cinderella Castle was preserved for posterity by a mind-bending and world-changing restoration. In the waning years of the 19th century, a certain Bavarian monarch, King Ludwig II, found himself licking the wounds of defeat at the hands of Prussia, but rather than sulk, he channeled his energies into an enterprise of epic proportions, the erection of Neuschwanstein Castle. And this wasn't just any old pile of bricks. Oh no, it was to be a domicile fit for a king, quite literally, with a nod to his hero, none other than Richard Wagner. Think of it as a fan's ultimate tribute, a stone and mortar fan letter to the composer's melodramatic operas, with the majestic alpine scenery of Ludwig's childhood stomping grounds, Hohenschwangau, as a backdrop. Neuschwanstein was to outshine any medieval fortress that ever existed, both a dwelling and a three-dimensional homage to the valiant knights and epic tales that Wagner so melodically immortalized. The groundbreaking, or rather castle-raising event on the 5th of September 1869 kicked off what was basically a construction marathon. Workers took to the formidable task, defying the craggy landscape with state-of-the-art building tactics and perhaps an utter disregard for budget constraints. The treasury's coffers would quiver and quake as the tab doubled to a sum that would have modern accountants fainting, close to a cool 200 million euros in today's cash. And now here's the kicker. Ludwig II, the royal visionary behind this grandiose scheme, got to enjoy his dream castle only in his daydreams, having passed away even before the last battlement was in place. Thus, as for the decor, the interior finishing touches which mirrored Ludwig's unslaked desire for his own fairy tale realm, were a posthumous affair. This architectural wonder, born out of military defeat, morphed into a rather grand monument to what could have been for the ill-fated king. After Ludwig's death, his intended solitary hideaway became an ironic magnet for the masses, even in the early 1900s before airplane travel and the global tourism industry. Little did those early visitors know, this architectural marvel would soon spark a flame in the imagination of Walt Disney, a man known for crafting realms of fantasy and wonder, setting the stage for it to become the quintessence of fairy tale dreams in the hearts of children across the globe. Perched like an imperial crown atop the lush tapestries of Bavaria's alpine foothills, Neuschwanstein Castle might easily be mistaken for a backdrop in a high-definition fantasy video game rather than a 19th century homage to medieval grandeur. Indeed, imagine a castle so steeped in whimsy that it would become the blueprint for the House of Mouse's most enchanting palaces. Neuschwanstein, with its towers reaching skyward like the outstretched hands of a magician, was never meant for defense. Instead, it was an architect's gamble across the drawing board leaping over practicality to land squarely in the realm of the fantastic. Within these walls, bedecked with the images of royalty, chivalrous knights and star-crossed lovers, King Ludwig II brought to life a medieval tapestry in stone and mortar. However, unlike the sturdy symmetric fortresses of the medieval past, Neuschwanstein's design is an exuberant defiance of geometry, with an asymmetry that suggests a fairy tale penned by Mother Nature herself. And it's this spirited eccentricity that caught the eye of a young Walt Disney, a man whose own empire was built on the foundations of youthful imagination. In fact, it's said that the turrets of Disney's Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty castles owe their spiraling grace to Ludwig's alpine fantasy. Yet while the Bavarian masterpiece is firmly rooted in Romanesque sensibilities, think robust towers and rounded arches, 
Disney's versions flirt with gothic influences and sport a slender, more skyward-bound aesthetic. Now, Neuschwanstein itself is a pastiche of styles, its Romanesque heart wrapped in Byzantine elegance and romantic flair. A fortress of fancy, it boasts an elongation of structures that dance along the cliff's edge, a celebration of form over function, with its decorative turrets and picturesque pinnacles. While its windows, arrayed in pairs and trios, bring forth images of ancient cloisters, they also wink at the viewer, as if in the know of their own theatricality. It's almost as if there was a silent pact between the King's vision and Disney's dream, a shared secret that to this day continues to spin tales of enchantment, where for a moment the fantastical seems utterly tangible. However, as the decades of the 20th century rolled along, Europe would soon brace for the upheaval of World War II, with the once invulnerable Neuschwanstein Castle facing an uncertain future. Its storied halls, a refuge for royal whimsy, were on the verge of becoming silent witnesses to the ravages of time and war. During the horrifying conflagrations of World War II, the Grand Neuschwanstein Castle found itself a reluctant repository for Europe's ravaged riches. It's hard to believe that the walls which once reverberated with the footsteps of the Bavarian monarchy had been repurposed as the Nazis' own version of a treasure trove, hiding masterpieces amid its Gothic spires. Indeed, the fairy tale fortress was a repository for pilfered art, a backdrop for the Hitler Youth's March, and then a post-war pit stop for GI soldiers needing a bed for the night. It's said that amidst the grandeur, soldiers stumbled upon a trove of photo albums, a who's who of looted finery. These eventually played a part in restoring stolen goods to their rightful places, like returning misplaced children to their homes. And the 1980s proved that even castles aren't immune to the march of time, as Neuschwanstein's underpinnings hinted at an unwelcome truth. Gravity is no respecter of palaces. The foundation showed signs of distress, and the interior too, perhaps miffed at the unending parade of post-war tourists, began showing its age. We can only imagine the walls whispering for a break as day-trippers shuffled through, and the relentless flash of cameras fading fabrics and tarnishing timber. Yet in this story, our castle is the protagonist that never truly saw its own grand finale. King Ludwig II's dream remained incomplete, with visitors touring the mere 14 rooms finished before his untimely demise. As the 90s rolled in, the architectural tune changed to one of urgency. Renovations were in the cards for our architectural celebrity, struggling under the weight of over 70 million visits. The signs of a well-loved landmark were there, a throne room crack that would make any monarch blanch and brocades begging for a bath. By the cusp of a new millennium, UNESCO threw its hat in the ring, eyeballing Neuschwanstein with a mixture of concern and awe. Indeed, their criteria for outstanding universal value could have been penned with the castle in mind. Thus, with UNESCO's attention entering the fray, the castle's fabled spires and turrets, once on the brink of becoming relics of a bygone age, were poised on the edge of rebirth. In the cosy Bavarian village of Schwangau, high on a hill, the venerable Neuschwanstein Castle found itself in the spotlight of a meticulous makeover, kicking off in 2012. And the historians and preservation enthusiasts involved in the process definitely had their work cut out for them. Assessing the condition of modern materials, masquerading in medieval garb, upped the ante in the restoration game. The stately dwelling's precarious perch above Schwangau brought additional logistical larks, as one doesn't simply pop over to a fairy tale castle's turret with a hammer and nails. With a 20 million euro budget unfurled like a royal decree, 2013 marked the commencement of the grand refurbishment, the largest in its storied existence. This operation unfolded in carefully choreographed stages to keep the cash register ringing from tourism, ensuring that culture vultures could still traipse through its halls without missing a beat. The act one of this drama saw the gateway building's facade and top hat getting a touch-up, with a scheduled curtain call by the autumn of 2017. Then, the spotlight swung to the retaining wall along Neuschwanstein-Straße, laying the groundwork for the next scene. But as with any good story, a twist, Neuschwanstein was still a magnet for castle crashes, pulling in a cool 1.5 million a year. 
This cavalcade of culture seekers, alongside Father Time's relentless march, left the castle's insides a tad worse for wear. The troop behind the scenes juggled keeping the drawbridge down for visitors and the necessary preservation waltz with admirable finesse. By 2016, Mother Nature flexed her muscles, tossing in weather woes to the mix and thing the plot for the restoration team. And a few years later, cutting-edge 3D scanning waltzed right alongside, turning every nook and cranny into digital blueprints, aiding in the castle's spruce-up with laser precision. As the decade drew to a close, 2019 saw Neuschwanstein become the darling of public debate, as critics and aficionados clashed swords over the soul of restoration. The bone of contention, should it shine anew or wear its age with pride? Indeed, this beloved bastion wasn't destined to be a pristine Disney set piece, but a storied sanctuary where each stone tells a tale and perhaps preserves the patina of time for the future to admire. As we rolled into 2020 with all the subtlety of a New Year's Eve firework display, Neuschwanstein Castle was putting on the final touches, not of makeup, mind you, but a restoration of the most painstaking kind. And this wasn't just another paint job. Imagine 70 million footsteps, from globetrotters to the curious, pacing through since 1886, each leaving their microscopic mark on history. This restoration was like lovingly ironing your grandparents' face. It's about cherishing the stories told by every line and crease, not trying to make them disappear. Stefan Wolf, master of the fine brush and connoisseur of the ecclesiastical palette, was the ringleader of this artful balancing act. He wasn't beautifying, he was preserving, kind of like a museum curator for plaster, stone and steel. Come 2021, the grand Tada moment was at hand. Neuschwanstein swung open its regal doors, welcoming admirers into its embrace once more. Visitors could now embark on a guided odyssey through history and architecture, a journey that was not just about seeing, but about experiencing the grandeur. The plot thickened in 2022, when the Marion Brooker, a photographer's dream bridge, was once again ready for its close-up, having had its own nip and tuck. The castle's reopening was more than a fresh coat of paint. It was a jumpstart for the local wallet, with the magnetism of the castle drawing eyes and euros alike. In addition, in keeping with the times, Neuschwanstein Castle had gone green. No, not with envy, but with energy. Sustainability was now king of the castle. While solar panels gave the historic vibes a miss, wind turbines became the accessory du jour on nearby fields, and local rooftops flirted with the sun. As for tourism, that double-edged sword of income and wear, the castle's custodians juggled visitor numbers and climate challenges with the deftness of a circus performer. Buses with low floors, lifts for tired legs, and spaced out visiting hours meant everyone could enjoy the spectacle without elbowing their neighbor. Now, as we continue through the 2020s, Neuschwanstein's silhouette still casts a long shadow over the world of art and architecture. And while it has become a muse for the House of Mouse, it stands as a paragon of how culture can shake hands with eco-consciousness. This is no mere relic, it's a beacon of how tradition can dance with innovation. Therefore, the narrative of Neuschwanstein isn't finished. It's still being written, with each visitor adding a word, each green initiative a sentence, and every little repair a chapter in this ongoing story of preservation and renewal. And now, we'd like to see you in the comments. Have you been to Neuschwanstein Castle, or would like to go? We absolutely love hearing from our community with their personal tales regarding classic architecture and travel. We look forward to hearing from you, and thanks again for joining us on another episode of Old Money Mansions.